So we now head into the last set of races for today, the penultimate round of the 2021 BNL Karting Series season. Let's have a look at the grid for Micromax. Following on from the pre-final, Yenthi Munun came back from Stone Dead last to win the race and uh, starts on pole position as a result of that. Boris Maximov takes uh, starts from second alongside uh, Moon on the front row. Vic van Kampenhout and Noah Jensen, Jansen take uh, up their positions on row two. Lucas Stodder and Jack Freeman, row three. James Robert and Felipe Reis uh, race uh, round at the top four rows ahead of Liam Sokol and Tristan Chase. Uh, Tom Pappenberg, Matisse uh, Piesens and Stig de Reidemaker round out the 13 strong with Reidemaker not finishing the pre-final. So 13 minutes on the clock plus an additional lap. So they now go on to the formation lap ahead of 13 minutes plus an additional lap of racing. And the red lights are reignited on the starting gantry. And once again, it's always great to see this, that they get into the formation rather quickly. So it is Munin and Maximov that are on the front row this time around. 12 minutes plus, or tw 13 minutes plus an additional lap to go as they come through the final corner at a slow pace. Into the tram lines once again for the final. Revs rise, are we ready? Lights are out, we are off and racing and Maximov gets a nose ahead of Munin going into turn two and Munin ends up being into what is now going to be fourth place at the end of the very first three corners as they make their way through into turn five for the first time of asking Maximov leads the way might actually might still be in second but looks to be more the case that it will be in fourth place as Pappenberg has already started making moves up the order got a lightning start from 11th on the grid Looks to be in around about sixth position. So has made hay whilst the sun has shone. So through into turn 10, now out of 11. The driver's coming, it's Maximov versus Janssen, Van Kampenhout, and then it's Moonen that round out the top four positions. So we're about to complete lap number one. And Maximov leads by just over 0.44 of a second. Janssen holding on to second for the minute. Ahead of Van Kampenhout and then Moonen. Then we've got uh, Lucas Soder and then Tom Pappenberg up into P6 after just the opening lap around the 1,360 metre circuit. And Pappenberg is going to be gunning for higher than at least fifth place. So it could be that Moonen might be looking for the move and gets through. On Van Kampenhout going into turn seven by the narrowest of margins. And Stordur was nearly in the back bumper of Van Kampenhout. Van Kampenhout goes ultra defensive, launches onto the curbs, going through turn number nine. So they're about to come through to complete another lap. And now the move is on for P3. Moonen looks to be side by side with Kampenhout, and then Pappenberg has got through on Stordur. And that was through turn two, nicely executed by the pair of drivers there. 
Now Moonen back behind Van Kampen. Houten has got Papenberg right on the back bumper. And Papenberg might go for an assist on Moonen and gets through. And oh, how, was there a little bit of a touch there between Van Kampenhout and Papenberg? Going through the chicane in turn seven. That was pretty close, but they both got away with that one. So three minutes down, 10 to go, plus an additional lap. Pappenberg is sizing up. Moonen for a move for P3 as they come out of the final corner across the stripe. Maximov leads. Janssen second. Pappenberg looking for an opportunity to get through as a little bit further back. That Storder has just been passed by Van Kampenhout. That's for P5. So every single one of the uh, 13 drivers that started this race are still circulating. But it is a clear advantage as all. Well. That was a bit of a late lunge there. That was uh, Felipe Rise that uh, went through, and I think that was on Jack Freeman. Uh, Rise might have been just a little bit... Uh, overzealous but managed to get it through on the young Brit. Justin Shays rounds out the top 11 but at the minute it is still going to be nip and tuck between second, third and fourth because Janssen is trying to hold on. Moon is right up the back bumper of the 31 and Tom Pappenberg is waiting in the wings. Now pulls alongside the number 10. Moon has got nowhere to go and Pappenberg up the inside. Moon and round the outside it's nearly three abreast. Oh my goodness me, Pappenberg nearly got through and got second from fourth through turn two. Got the job, got the job done to take P3. Granted, I'll give Tom Pappenberg that and now gets through on Noah Janssen. Moonen nearly got through on Janssen through turn six as well as they head their way down the Europol arm. And Stodur and Van Kampenhout still battling away tooth and nail. And Stodur looks to have gotten through. Or has he? It's side by side between the pair for fifth position. Great control and spatial awareness from those two, but they've got to watch their six because just behind them is Great Britain's James Roberts, who's up the inside through turn 10, side by side, and it's a little bit of a run wide there for Van Kampenhout. It's getting closer and closer, and I think also, just keeping my eyes out, is Jack Freeman with them? Yes, he is. So a four-way scrap. A little bit further back, and here goes Jentli Munen on the inside of Noah Janssen to now take P3 from the young German in the 31. Stodder is uh, still holding station in what is now going to be fifth position, but the battle for the lead. Pappenberg not probably in the best of moods and has decided to get himself fired up and try and go after the driver ahead and that's Boaz Maximov. Now remember these two did have a tangle at turn seven in the opening couple of laps in the pre-final earlier on. So six minutes down, seven to go plus a lap and Pappenberg is applying the pressure quite fastidiously. And Jentli Munen is trying to pull away from Noe Janssen, that's third and fourth place. And Lucas Stodder better watch out behind because there are four carts trying to hone in. One of them is Van Kampen holding the 24. Then it's James Roberts. Felipe Reyes in eighth and Jack Freeman rounding out the top nine. And Freeman started in sixth position. Because there were two time penalties given. Uh, Tom Pappenberg and also... Felipe Reyes were also were both given a 10 second time penalty having been deemed to have caused the collision in their respective incidents. But we're over the halfway point in this race and Maximov still holding on and has gone the same defensive line through turn 10 on Papenberg. Papenberg just waiting for the moment to, uh, uh, to present uh, present itself and on this particular occasion I'm afraid well Pappenberg gives Maximov an assist from behind 
And that's a double assist. That's hindering Papenberg rather than helping. But sometimes you can unsettle the back end of the car in front of you as long as it's the slightest of impacts. But no harm, no foul there. As all, Papenberg's trying to open the window of opportunity coming through out of turn number six and heading down into turn seven off of the Europolan. Papenberg is trying to really put on that pressure on Maximov and Maximov is not buckling. In other words, Boris Maximov is soaking up that pressure like the proverbial sponge right now and has got about half a cut length of, of a lead going into turn 10 again. Makes the rear axle of that cut as wide as humanly possible so Papenberg does not have an opportunity to get through. But the way that Papenberg is sizing up Maximov across the start finish line to complete lap number eight, onto lap nine we go. And Papenberg is not putting all his cards on the table. The youngster from the Netherlands is just waiting, biding time. But whilst they're battling, I have noticed that Jente Munen is trying to close the gap, but the number 10 from Belgium is unable to do so. And now Noe Janssen has been passed by the number 12 of Lucas Stodder in the meantime. So Janssen now down into what is fifth position and behind them, Van Kampenhout has lost out to Philippe Reis and then you've got James Robert and Jack Freeman uh, behind them as well with Freeman at the back end of that four cart squabble. Three minutes and 50 still to go. It's not over until the chequered flag falls and it's far from doing so at the minute. But some great battling in the meantime. The lead is still line astern. Papenberg gets the slipstream once again. Bump drafting going through into turns one and two. Will he get the move done? Not on this occasion yet again. But the two Sudovy test drivers, well, Jack Freeman has just absolutely mugged the pair of Vic van Kampenhout and Jack Freeman going through turn two. An inspired move from the youngster from Great Britain. It's always nice to see new, fresh faces in the BNR Karting Series, and it provides us with a new breath of fresh air with the racing that we have seen over the course of this season. And Micromax is one of the youngest pillars, is the youngest pillar in the Rotax Racing family when it comes to start your journey. But then, as I say that, Freeman loses out to Van Kampen, how it goes back up the inside of the 93 through turn nine. But the chess games are still being played. The pieces are putting, being put on the board strategically so they'll know exactly when they need to strike. And that's exactly what Papenberg's doing. The same tactic is being used by Papenberg going through into turns one and two. but with just over two minutes to go. I think it's going to be maybe two to three laps before the chequered flag falls that Papenberg will go for that move. He's just waiting, as I said earlier, just biding time like a tiger in the reeds. And when that moment presents itself, Papenberg will strike without a moment, without even a second's hesitation. Through into turn 10 once again. Maximov has been hanging on. But how much longer can he hold on for? Can the youngster from the Netherlands? It's a Dutch 1-2 at the moment. Coming out of the final corner, we're going to go on to lap number 12 with just under a minute and a half remaining. And the gap was 69 thousandths. That was the margin between first and second across the line. It's been pretty much like that. <coughs> At least the last three to four laps. And it's that guessing game. Who's going to be the one that is going to do the move that decides this race? Now, Papenberg, as they say, once bitten, twice shy. You won't go for the same move twice. And the move that Papenberg did to try and get past Maximov was through turn seven, through the chicane. Now through into eight, we've got just under 60 seconds to go on the clock.
So this time around we go on to the penultimate lap. So lap 13 out of 14 underway. And the gap between Jente Munen and Tom Pappenberg has now shrunk to just under a second. So Munen has just done a personal best and is running the best part of just under a tenth, quicker than the two in front. But it's not going to be enough for Munen to try and capitalise as the timer now strikes zero. Next time around, it's the last lap board, and that will be the sign for Tom Pappenberg to go for broke. And with the way the Maximov was a little bit wider going through turn eight, the momentum carried by Tom Pappenberg will be in the number 48's favour and also because of the fact that the slipstream will be to the 48's advantage coming out of the final corner as it was nearly side by side between the pair coming through turn 10 now into 11 final corner of the penultimate lap here we go last lap board and straight away Maximov breaks the toe by going to the left but Pappenberg is going towards the outside Tries to get the cut through. Won't happen for turn three. Through four and five. Now, if Pappenberg wants to make the move, he's going to try and do it. He's going to do it now. He's going to do it now and he's got through. But Maximov is going to get the undercut. Up the inside goes the number 30 into turn seven. And Pappenberg has to relinquish it. And as I say that, Yenthi Moonen is now with them. It's a three-way strap in the final for the victory on the last lap of asking, lap number 14. It could be a bit of a drag race to the finish. If anyone might remember the Junior Rotax pre-final earlier on. So out of turn 11 for the final time, Pappenberg sizing up the move right now, up the inside through turn 12. Maximov's going to get the, up the inside. Moonen's going to try and make it three abreast and does. And... Maximov wins it. Pappenberg and Moonen separated by one one thousandth of a second at the stripe. Oh, it was going to be close. I said it was nearly going to be three abreast coming out of turn 12. I wasn't far wrong. But what a drive by Boz Maximov to take what was the victory. And that actually, in terms of the provisional day result, that will put Boaz Maximov on 45 points. Jemthi Munen finished in P3, but Tom Pappenberg did everything in his power to try and get past. And there is a very, very happy Boaz Maximov after that one. So Maximov takes the victory. Let's have a look at the final results, as everyone has crossed the line. So, uh, it was uh, Boaz Maximov that wins by 81 thousandths of a second. And the margin between second and third, one one thousandths between Pappenberg and Jente Munen. Lucas Todo would finish fourth at the end of our all, ahead of Noah Janssen. Philippe uh, Reyes, uh, Vic van Kampenhout. Good showing again by the young Brits in the form of James Roberts and Jack Freeman. Stig de Redemaker, running out the top ten. Ahead of Tristan Shays, uh, Liam Sokol and Matthias Piesens, all finishing the 14 laps of racing.